Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how can you get started with using Llama 2 with your Azure OpenAI instance. So let's get started by logging on to the Azure portal and I am on my machine learning studio. So once you are on this page, what you can do is you can go to model catalog and here you can search or you can search here or you can even click on this because it's appearing over here. So let's click on this view model and here are the Llama 2 models which are listed and we can use. So the first one, if I will create the chat completion, on the left hand side, you can see the details about this model, like what all parameters, how much parameters it supports, what are the variations it has, like 7 billion, 13 billion, as well as 70 billion, then what kind of input it takes, then output, what is the model architecture and how you should use what all hardware and software requirements are there along with the training data and the evaluation results. So if you want, you can even compare Llama 1 with Llama 2 against all these different sizes. So definitely you can go and another important thing is these ethical considerations and limitations. So you should definitely go and read about this before start using this model. And this is where they have given the sample input and the sample output. And on the right hand side, you can see that uh, there is a pay as you go inference API, which you can use it and deploy it directly from here. Another thing is if you want to test your model, then you can just click here and ask some questions like what to do in what to do in Seattle. So it will go and fetch the response for us. Let's give it a few seconds. Okay, so it is a very vibrant and exciting city. So these all things uh, you can do in Seattle and this is how it got the response. So next thing what I can show you is this is there is a button called evaluate. So you can click on the evaluate and if you have any data test data selected, then you can click on this upload your data. And if you have already selected existing data, then also you can go ahead and select one, then you need to explain like which column is your sentence and which column you are considering as a label key. So let me select, let's say, I'm not uh, going to complete this because it is going to ask me about uh, compute cluster and all. So, so these are the ones which I'm having, but uh, for you to get the optimized results, it is good to go in the CPU, uh, click on select the CP GPU and then select, but as I do not have quota in this particular zone, so I cannot do it, but it's very straightforward and guided process. You can definitely give it a try if you have the access. Apart from that, there are some uh, advanced settings. So if you want to submit all your details manually by yourself, then you can go ahead and just furnish these details and it will allow you to evaluate the model. So let's cancel it. Next thing is the deployment part. So under deployment, there are two things, pay as you go and the real time endpoint. So right now it is disabled because it is this feature is still in preview and it is available only in West US 2 and East US 2. And you can see my current region is East US. So that's the reason it is disabled for me. So I can quickly walk you through this real time endpoint thing. So apart from deploying with pay as you go, uh, we can also deploy Llama 2 models uh, with the real to real time endpoints. And when we are deploying to this real time endpoints, we have the privilege to select all the details which are required to make our jobs run or to run our models. So it includes like what is your infrastructure, what kind of VM you need or how many instances you need to provision in order to handle your request. So these all things you can do it when you are going with the real time endpoint. But the only thing which you need to keep in mind is that all the models deployed to real time endpoints will consume quota from your subscription. So that is the key thing which you need to remember. So click on the real time thing and here you have two options. Would you like to enable Azure AI content safety or do you want to skip it? So I would recommend using this one. So if you don't know what is Azure AI content safety is, it is the policy which can protect you from any harmful or unwanted content. So here you can read the description as well. So this I'm selecting and then I'm saying proceed. So as soon as you will proceed, it will start generating the code for you. It will create a notebook for you. And here is the beautiful notebook, which is generated for us. So in this notebook, you will see it is 
<clears throat> it has given all the instructions very clearly like what are the prerequisites you need to have so you should have a virtual environment because you are going to run this workbook in that then you need to make sure that you have contributor role on this resource group because the notebook will create AI content safety resources and that will be using the same identity then these are the variables and the workspace deployment so make sure that these are correct and if it is not you need to uh, just replace these values then these are the dependencies that you need to install this is how you can get the credentials and another thing is to configure the workspace so there is nothing much we need to do things are already in place we just need to use it and these few two blocks are for the content safety related so you need to create resources if it is not already in place and here comes the llama 2 part where in first block it is saying check if model is available in aml registry or not so aml registry is you must have seen the link at the bottom and i was showing so this is talking about the same registry and here all these things are related to that and this is the most important part creating the endpoint so let's say if you want to create everything using the code then this is the code you can use to create your own endpoint and this is the code which is telling you how to deploy the llama model using the code this is the testing part and here comes the sample responses so this is it uh, like the one if, which is shown over here is for successful response when everything is good and you can expect the good response then you have the blocked response because of hateful content so this data is not up to the mark it is against our content policy though so this will be like blocked similarly this one is a very good example so you will get the response like what is the tallest building in the world so as of 2021 Burj Khalifa in Dubai then it is asking in continuation to that uh, that in Africa which is the tallest building and in Europe so by giving these examples it will automatically understand that okay in this particular question we are asking about the tallest building in Europe so this is one way to provide your inputs then this is again uh, uh, this is again a blocked request because this is not as per our policy and then comes the endpoint invoke so how you can invoke the endpoint so you just need to pass in the endpoint deployment name and the sample data the sample data is nothing but the json which we just constructed above now if you want to use this you can definitely use this code but it's good to go and clone this notebook so as soon as you will clone this it will start uh, it will get this notebook here and you can run and test it inside the editor itself so here it is successfully cloned so here you need to use your compute as well as you have the provision to save it add it and even run this so individual cells will have this run button so you can definitely go ahead and uh, run this notebook here itself otherwise you can also click on this edit in vs code button and it will open this entire thing in your vs code so this is how you can validate and test this particular thing so i hope you got an idea how you can get started with this and that's all i have for today thanks for watching